Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of my Tailwind CSS mini series. Now, in this video, we are going to be going over pseudo selectors and transitions using Tailwind. Now, um, pseudo selectors are generally for uh, kind of applying styles in certain cases to elements. For example, one pseudo selector is the hover pseudo selector. Uh, and what that does is it will apply a given style if an element is hovered over. Um, and then there's also the focus pseudo selector, which is mainly for input elements. And then um, we're going to be combining that with a kind of auxiliary uh, feature, which is transitions. Uh, and we will be basically making a little tile or a little div that will um, kind of get bigger. It'll grow and change its color when you hover over it. And then when you kind of off, when you're off it, it'll go back to normal, which is pretty cool. Um, and I think we, we've implemented something similar in my, um, in my CSS animations tutorial series. So if you are not familiar with transitions, I highly recommend you check out that tutorial series. And I will basically just be scratching the surface as with a lot of these videos in Tailwind. I am incorporating the various topics that I've uh, kind of taught in more depth over the previous tutorial series. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get started by opening up our index.html and then hitting the go live button. In addition, I'm going to pull up the Tailwind documentation. <clears throat> Oops. And then, OK, so I guess the first concept that I want to cover is hover. So when you come here and you search hover, it'll be hover, focus, and other states. Um, and some of these down here uh, actually aren't usable unless you are running Tailwind with NPM, which as I've stated previously um, in this tutorial series, I will probably make a video kind of demonstrating how to con uh, configure Tailwind and do that. Uh, but most of this has just been using this little CDN here, this link, which allows us to use the base Tailwind. But it's actually more customizable than that if we use um, some more complicated installation steps, which I'll probably go over in the future. Um, so for now, the main ones that you can use are Hover and Focus. Um, so just to kind of demonstrate what that does, we're going to, uh, well, first, let's go ahead and quickly take a look over what we have here. We have a simple nav bar that kind of resizes itself based on how big the screen is, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove this code, uh, although I will quickly explain. We set the different styles based on the screen size, which these styles only get applied when the screen is small, like right now. But when it's medium, aka when it kind of switches, then these styles instead will be applied. And that's how we're kind of changing the layout of our little nav bar here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove this, like I said, and we are going to start fresh. <clears throat> so we're going to start by making a div. Uh, we're going to give it a width of 32, a height of 32, a background color of blue 400. Um, and I think that's actually it. If I save this um, and I resize the window. Yeah, so we have width 32, height 32, background blue 400. And then um, let's go ahead and give it a simple margin of uh, 16 just so we can get it a little bit closer to here. OK, so the first uh, pseudo selector is called hover. And if you're not familiar, you can come here to the uh, hover, focus, and other states. Scroll down, and you'll get hover right here. Now, the gist of, this, of the style itself is you type in hover, colon, and then you type in whatever style you want to apply. So for example, what if we wanted to um, set the background color to darken itself, blue uh, 200 when it's hovered? So notice right now nothing happens, but when I hover, or actually that's lighter, let me make it darker. Um, let's make it 600 maybe. So when I hover over it, it'll get darker like that, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, notice my mouse right here, and then I'm hovering, and it gets darker. And what we're doing is we're just uh, applying this style when we hover over it. Um, now, you know, that's, that's pretty much the extent. It works for all of these different properties. It doesn't work for every property, but um, just to kind of... Uh, Recap, yeah, we have this hover kind of prefix, it works similarly to the other prefixes that we've been going over. Um, and then I guess a small little side uh, topic is just basic transforms. Um, if you're not familiar with transforms, I highly recommend you check out my, um, I think that was in my CSS animations tutorial series as well. But the gist of transforms are they allow you to move things, scale things, kind of rotate things both in 3D and in 2D. Um, and they just let you change kind of the layout. And you can do this by adding transform and then like that. So for example, if we wanted to make this uh, thing bigger, 
let's uh, go ahead and just do like scale and then um, if I put zero, I think that removes it. Scale 100, I think makes it regular and then like 120. Uh, I don't actually know the, the proper values here. So let me go ahead and check. So come here. Um, yep, uh, controlling the transform behavior. Oh, you have to add the transform utility. I'm actually not sure if this will work then. It might. Uh, okay, it seems to be somewhat working. Um, and let's see if 150 works. What if 120? Perfect. Okay, so um, if I actually add hover um, and then like that, it should. I'm trying to figure out how to do these styles using just the base tailwind that we have. Um, and I'm actually not fully sure if that's going to be possible. Um, so for now, actually, what we're going to do is we're just going to have it uh, change color instead of also get bigger. But uh, the gist is is um, we can basically change the scale of the object itself, which if I remove this, I think, oh, I see. Okay, so scale needs to be 150 then. And um, basically, when I hover, it will get bigger. So yeah, actually, that works fine. So um, just a quick recap, we add this transform class to just allow us to transform our element, which means either positioning, rotating, or scaling it. Um, and then we actually can apply the scale 150, which scales it to 150% of its size when we hover, which is, that's what it's doing here. Um, and then we can actually transition using a transition. So that's a basic transform right there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, check off hover. Um, and quickly, I will uh, kind of go over focus really quick. Uh, basically, you create an input, and then you, uh, let's just give it a width of 40, a height of 32, and actually we'll give it a 64 width, and then a height of 32. And let's go ahead and put the, um, the placeholder to be uh, enter here. So um, actually, I don't think we have a border. So let's go ahead and give this a border. Just a quick recap. Border um, 16. Uh, although actually, let me make sure I am using the correct um, the correct notation for this. Border width. Um, Oh, I use 16, I, I need to use 8. I was wondering what was going on here. So yeah, 8 is the biggest border you can add, I think. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we can do that. Let's just actually make it 4. And then border uh, black, just to make it a simple black border. Okay, so this is kind of um, a little input that we can use. We make it a little bit less tall. Uh, and we can type in anything in here. Um, but we want to make it so that when you actually click on the uh, input itself, it will go blue. Or we can, you know, I've been using blue a little bit too much. Let's make it go red or green or something. So basically, again, this is called the focus pseudo selector. So instead of hover, we will use focus. Um, and then uh, and then you can add green, for example, and then 400. And what will happen now is, oh, BG green 400. And then when we hover over, the input will go green, which is pretty cool. So that is the focus pseudo selector. And then we can add transitions, and then we're going to do a little example. Uh, so for transitions, we will just quickly look it up here. Uh, transition. And basically, we can use these uh, different classes, like transition property, to choose which properties we transition. And then we can use transition uh, duration to figure out uh, the actual duration. So just to kind of demonstrate this in our div itself, the one that kind of changes color and grows when we hover, we are going to add a transition of all. It's just to transition all properties. And then we're going to set a duration of maybe, uh, I think it's, OK. Um, we'll make it 0.5 seconds, so 500 milliseconds. And what happens now is when we hover over, it kind of grows and shrinks just like that, which is pretty cool. Um, this looks so much better, honestly. And um, yeah, that's 
how we can uh, do transitions. And then, of course, we can also add an easing function as shown in my, um, or a timing function as shown in my animations tutorial series. So we just have to say ease um, in out, for example. And then now we have a cool ease on that animation. So that is pretty much uh, all I had to show in this video. Uh, I'm sorry, I made this a couple hours later than I normally do. Um, I got a little caught up in the morning, so I wasn't able to push it out this early, but I still got to it today. Uh, if you want to see more videos in this series, and this one is running a little bit longer than my other uh, CSS mini series, because there really is a lot to unpack with Tailwind. It's basically going over all of CSS in a framework, so naturally it's going to have more episodes. Uh, I will be continuing to add to this playlist daily, which is linked in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications whenever I post new videos. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.